Hello everyone, it's Daniel from TechMind Factory and welcome to this next video from the series called Implementing Secure Applications with Microsoft Azure. In this video, we are going to see how to securely access Azure Key Vault secrets with managed identities. So in this video, we will continue the topic about Azure RBAC and managed identities. So let's start. Let's start with the solution architecture diagram for this application. So in this specific video, we are going to see how to access Azure Key Vault from Document API and File Upload API. And actually, the method uh, for accessing secrets in Azure Key Vault is the same in both APIs. So actually, we are going, we are going to see the source code for Document API uh, to retrieve the secrets uh, securely from Azure Key Vault, and the same method is used for File Upload API. And again, uh, from a developer perspective, we want to do it in a secure way. So we don't want to use any connection strings, account keys, whatever it is. We want to use manage identities and uh, Azure RBAC roles. Perfect. So a little bit of theory. So Azure Key Vault. Azure Key Vault is used to securely store and manage sensitive information like keys, secrets, and certificates. I just want to make it clear so we all understand uh, what is the purpose of Azure Key Vault in this solution architecture. It helps protect access to applications and resources in the Azure Cloud. It's super crucial. Like in potentially in every solution in the Azure Cloud, you will see Azure Key Vault because it helps you uh, to store sensitive uh, data like credentials, secrets, certificates. Gets. Okay, so now uh, when it comes to accessing Azure Key Vault, obviously, uh, you know, like uh, there can be some confusion around it. So I want to clarify it and I want to show the best practices here for accessing Azure Key Vault. So this is our sample so solution scenario. So we have Azure Container App in the Azure Cloud. Uh, this Azure Container App is obviously uh, used to host our Documents API and also File Upload API. So we use Azure Containers Apps and there is Azure Key Vault. And actually, to securely access Azure Key Vault, uh, we use Manage Identity with specific Azure RBAC role assigned to it. So Key Vault Secrets User RBAC role. So then, uh, Azure Container App can securely access Azure Key Vault. And because of the fact that obviously in the source code of the application, uh, we have this integration implemented, we can leverage Manage Identity and this RBAC role assigned to this Manage Identity to securely access secrets in Azure Key Vault. Okay, so that's perfect when it comes to cloud environment. So once our application is deployed to the Azure cloud, uh, you know, like, and those services are there, everything is secure, isolated, great. However, from a developer perspective, there can be a question. What about local development? What about the local environment? So when it comes to environment, I still have my cloud services in the Azure cloud, but I would like to connect securely to Azure Key Vault from my uh, local machine. So in this specific scenario, you can also achieve it using your developer, uh, developer account registered in Microsoft uh, Entra ID tenant, which is used to secure Azure resources. And I will show you that. So you can use your uh, developer account actually to also securely connect to Azure Key Vault without any, using any, you know, like uh, crazy things like connection strings or, or some secrets in the source code. Uh, so it's still possible to do it directly from Visual Studio. And we will also see it in this video. So actually now it's time to see, see it all in practice. So let me really quickly switch to Azure Portal first to describe uh, managed identities and RBAC roles assigned, and then we will see the source code. Okay, so here is the Azure Portal and my resource group where I created all resources for the development environment. And it's super important to understand the fact that typically you will have at least three environments like dev, test, 
and production. And obviously for developers to test all those integrations, it's crucial to have some of those Azure services created in the Azure cloud. So that's why I have this resource group here. As you can see, I have all these resources from the solution architecture diagram created here. And in this specific video, we are going to focus on Azure containers apps and Azure Key Vault. And we will see how to securely access secrets in the, in the Key Vault actually. So this is my Azure container app that is hosting my uh, Documents API. Documents API is written with ASP.NET Core uh, Web API, as you remember. And as you potentially remember, I also mentioned that I enable user assigned manage identity for uh, container apps. So when I click identity under the settings, and I will select user assigned managed identity, you can see that I have this managed identity enabled for my Azure container app. It means that I can use this managed identity also to integrate with Azure uh, services in the cloud. And also from the source code perspective, I can utilize this managed identity to access different kinds of Azure services without using any secrets, credentials and connection strings. So now, once I have this managed identity here, uh, I can open Azure Key Vault and also under access control, as you remember, and this is the place where we can assign uh, RBAC roles uh, to different kinds of um, uh, managed identities. So under role assignments, you will see that here I have my managed identity for Azure Container App. You see, this is the uh, managed identity I assigned to Containers Apps. And this managed identity has Key Vault Secrets user role assigned. So it means that right now, uh, when I deploy my application to Azure Container App, because of the fact that Azure Container App has this user assigned managed identity enabled, and this managed identity has this role assigned, Key Vault Secrets user role, it will be able to securely connect to Azure Key Vault. That's it, basically. So uh, now uh, let me show you a little bit of the source code so we understand actually what's going on from the application source code perspective. Okay, so here is the Visual Studio and here is Document API project open. And again, I use dependency injection here. So as you can see here, I have this app configuration service collection extensions uh, static class and extension method, add app configuration. And now let's explain what's going on here. And a small disclaimer, I want to mention something here, like in this specific scenario, I combined accessing secrets from Azure Key Vault with accessing configuration in the Azure App Configuration Service. So important fact is that in the next video from this series, you will see how I'm accessing a configuration from the Azure App Configuration. However, you can combine uh, this functionality with accessing secrets in Azure Key Vault. And that's what I will show you in this video. So as you can see, I have this add app configuration uh, method here. And as we can see uh, here, uh, I have two parts uh, for this code for accessing uh, actually configuration and secrets. If uh, this is a local uh, development, if I use a debug mode, and obviously, I will use my developer uh, account to access Azure Key Vault, which I will explain in a minute. And if this is a release mode, then this code will be used. So for now, let's focus on this code because this code will be actually executed when application is deployed in the Azure cloud. Perfect. So now important thing is that first of all, because of the fact that uh, I'm using here user assigned manage identity, I have to provide client ID of this managed identity in the app configuration. Okay, it's super important. So here I have to pass the client ID of user assigned managed identity. So the managed identity uh, you saw in the Azure portal that I assigned to Azure Container App. And obviously uh, we want to throw exception or information if the client ID is empty. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, if it's not empty, we want to use this extension method that is provided uh, with, in the specific NuGet package, we are, which I will show you in a minute. But what's happening here? As you can see, I'm using configuration dot add Azure app configuration. And here is the connect method. Here I'm providing app configuration uh, endpoint, actually. This will be explained in the next video. But the important fact is that here I'm providing manage identity credential. 
and I'm passing the client ID of my user assigned managed identity I created in the Azure portal and I assigned to Azure Container App. So this managed identity credential is from Azure Identity Nougat package, which I will show you also in a minute. But then, as you can see, I have this also method called configure key vault. It's also provided by the Nougat package, which I will show you. So when I use configure key vault here, I have to set also the credential, so manage identity credential. So again, I have to, I have to provide the client ID of my uh, user assigned managed identity. And because of the fact that my um, uh, user assigned managed identity uh, has uh, this RBAC role assigned, uh, which enables it to access secrets in the Azure Key Vault, my application will be also able to retrieve secrets from Azure Key Vault. Okay, so now let me right click on the project manage Nougat packages, let me explain uh, the packages I added here. So it's very important to understand that uh, for uh, this, this configuration here, you can see I'm using the package called Microsoft.Azure.AppConfiguration.ASP.NET Core. So this package will provide you with all those methods here. Okay, so it's very important. Obviously, you could integrate with Azure Key Vault separately and with Azure App Configuration separately in your source code. That's fine. You can use two different NuGet packages because there is also the NuGet package that you can use directly to access Azure Key Vault. But in this specific solution, I wanted to be sure that my configuration is stored in the Azure App Configuration service, which we will explain in the next video, and all the secrets, credentials, certificates are stored in the Azure Key Vault. And in the source code, I have the, the minimum amount of code to actually access those two services. So uh, this package is very helpful. I encourage you to use it. And also, as you can see under transitive uh, packages, I have this Azure Identity package, which actually uh, provides this Manage Identity Credential uh, class, uh, which I can use to pass the client ID of my uh, user assigned Manage Identity. So uh, with this approach here, uh, I will be able actually uh, to, uh, to access Azure Key Vault uh, and secrets in this Azure Key Vault. That's it actually. And now you can ask, okay, Daniel, this is for the release mode, uh, but what about our local development? So what will happen if I work with my source code, with my application on the local host, but still I want to integrate with Azure Key Vault, Azure App Configuration, just to check whether everything uh, works as expected. So. Uh, let's focus on this part too. So as you can see, uh, when it comes to the source code, it's almost the same. Like I have add Azure app configuration method here from the package I mentioned from, uh, from this package uh, here. Where is it? Um, this one. And I have configure key vault also method. But here the difference is Please note that in this specific scenario, I use my local developer identity. So I'm using default Azure credential here. And default Azure credential is also provided with Azure Identity Nougat package. So what's happening here underneath, actually? So this default Azure credential uh, will be used to retrieve all possible identities uh, to make sure that uh, we can successfully connect to the Azure Key Vault or Azure uh, services. So uh, when we look at default Azure credential uh, class, let me go to the definition, you can see that actually uh, this is the main class and from this class, all other classes like the manage identity credential uh, class derives. So let me go to implementation and as you can see, uh, Manage identity credential it derives from token credential. I apologize, I made a mistake. It should be token credential. And also this second class, which is called default Azure credential, also derives from token credential. Okay. And the thing is that with this piece of code, we will be able to use our developer identity in the Visual Studio. Why? Let's explain this. So in the Visual Studio, uh, you are authenticated. As you can see here, I'm authenticated with my account that is also uh, created in the Microsoft Entra ID tenant, which is used to secure 
my Azure subscription, where I created Azure resources like this Key Vault uh, service. And now, in the same way uh, as I, I assign Azure RBAC roles to manage identities, I can actually assign RBAC roles to developers, to developer accounts, or to security groups that contain developer accounts. So as you can see here, uh, if, I, uh, if I click uh, Tools and Options, and from there, uh, if I try to find, let me find it really quickly, I want to be sure that it's somewhere there, uh, Azure Service Authentication, as you can see, you have the account selection, okay? And this is the place where you can sign in using your developer account that is used to access Azure portal and all those resources. You can sign in, you can select the subscription because uh, there is like a, a filter tab. You can select the subscription also. And once you are authenticated, you click OK. And then this part of code will automatically uh, get your credential and it will use it here in this code to access Azure Key Vault. That's it. You don't have to do any crazy things around custom configuration, storing some credentials in the source code, nothing like this. You are just using your, your developer account, okay? So now let me get back to the Azure portal to show you uh, how I assigned RBAC role for my developer account. So here we are back to Azure portal. And as you can see, here is my developer account I use to sign in in the Visual Studio and I have this Kivo Secrets Officer RBAC role assigned. So that's why I will be able to access and modify secrets in the Azure Kivo. And that's it actually. So you can directly assign um, RBAC roles to your developers uh, or the better solution is to click Add Role Assignment. And as you remember, I mentioned, let me select one of those roles here. So Kiver Secrets user. As you remember, I mentioned that you can assign RBAC roles to groups, to security groups, to be more precise, in the Microsoft Entry ID. So what you can do also, you can create security group in the Microsoft Entry ID tenant. You can add your developers to this security group, and you can then assign the role uh, to the uh, to the to the security group, and then all people uh, that are members of this security group will have this RBAC role assigned too. So that's the better uh, actually approach because uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to track each developer account and permissions. Uh, you can have like a central security group. You can add people there and you can assign permissions to this um, specific security group and then those people will have all those permissions. Uh, an important fact is that um, it's not available, this functionality of assigning permissions to, to, to groups is not available in the free version of Microsoft Entry ID. You will have to obtain either a P1 or P2 license for that. So just a small disclaimer here, it's not available in the free version. Okay, great. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. In the next video, we are going to talk about securely accessing Azure App Configuration Service and storing app configuration there. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.